Hi friends, welcome to the channel The Nurse. Here we are discussing about Nursing Hub MCQs uh, that will be helpful for preparing SGP JMS uh, exams. So here I am included uh, some uh, questions from uh, COVID related questions and OBG questions and some of the questions from uh, anemia related questions. So we will uh, go to the topic before that if you are not subscribed to our channel please subscribe. We will move to the topic. Nursing MCQs 2023 that is helpful for preparing SGPJMS Lucknow exams. So first question. What is the most common mode of transmission for COVID-19? Direct contact with an infected person, inhalation of airborne dro droplet, consumption of contaminated food or water, skin to skin contact with an infected person. So it is an easy question. So correct answer is inhalation of airborne droplets. The common transmission of COVID-19 inhalation of airborne droplets. The most common mode of transmission of COVID-19 is through inhalation of airborne droplets that are produced when an infected person talks, coughs or sneezes. Second question, which of the following symptoms is most commonly associated with COVID-19? Diarrhea, loss of consciousness, bread in urine, loss of sense of smell or taste. Here correct answer is loss of sense of smell or taste. That is uh, during the second wave it was uh, very common and later stage the loss of sense of smell and taste was uh, not that much uh, severe. So in uh, smaller people only got these uh, issues in uh, last uh, term of COVID-19. Loss of sense of smell or taste is the most commonly reported symptom of COVID-19 and is often accompanied by fever, cough and shortness of breath. Third question, which of the following groups is highest risk of severe illness from COVID-19? Children, young adult, middle-aged adults, old, older adults. Here correct answer is option D, that is older adults. Older adults are more risky groups for COVID-19. Older adults, particularly those over the age of 65, are at the higher, highest risk for severe illness from COVID-19. Other high risk groups include individuals with underlying health conditions such as heart disease, diabetes and obesity. Fourth question, which of the following is the most effective way to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Wearing a mask, washing hands frequently, social distancing, all of the above. Correct answer, all the above options are uh, most effective way to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Washing, uh, washing hands frequently, wearing a mask, social distancing are the uh, most effective way. All of the above measures are effective in preventing the spread of COVID-19. Wearing a mask, washing hands frequently and maintaining social distance can all help to reduce the risk of transmission. Fifth question, which of the following COVID-19 vaccine has, has been shown to have the highest efficacy in clinical trials? Pfizer, BioNTech, Covaxin, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson. Here correct answer is Pfizer, BioNTech. That uh, vaccine uh, shows a highest efficacy in clinical trials around 94%. Uh, the Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines have been shown to have the highest efficacy in clinical trials with reported efficacy rates of 95 and 94.1 percentage respectively. 95 percentage for Pfizer, 94.1 uh, percentage for Moderna COVID-19 vaccines. Sixth question, which of the following is a common cause of secondary amenorrhea? Polycystic ovary syndrome, pregnancy, menopause, uterine fibroids. Correct answer is pregnancy. Secondary am amenorrhea is defined as the absence of menstrual bleeding for three months or more in a woman who previously had regular periods. Secondary amen amenorrhea means it is an absence of menstrual bleeding for three months or more in a woman who previously had a regular periods. 
Pregnancy is a common cause of secondary amenorrhea as the presence of the developing fetus prevents the shedding of the endometrial lining. So here uh, one assignment for you. Uh, can you tell the pri primary, uh, primary uh, amenorrhea reasons or causes? You can comment it below. So primary, primary amenorrhea causes. Seventh question. Which of the following is a common symptoms of endometriosis? Dyspareunia, dysmenorrhea, menorrhagia, amenorrhea. Common symptom of endometriosis that is dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea means painful menstruation. Endometriosis is a condition in which the tissue that normally lines the inside of the uterus, that is endometrium, grows outside the uterus, often on the ovaries, fallopian tubes or other pelvic organs. So, this endometrial tissue will uh, grow uh, other than the uh, uterine lining. So, that is maybe that may be uh, over the fallopian tube or, or inside the uh, ovaries or any other uh, pelvic organs. Dysmenorrhea or painful menstrual cramps is the common symptom of endometriosis. Then eighth question, which of the following is the most common type of ovarian tumor? Germ cell tumor, epithelial tumor, stromal tumor, sex code tumor. Here correct answer is epithelial tumor is the correct answer. Common type of ovarian tumor that is epithelial tumor. Ovarian tumors can be classified into four main types based on their cell of origin. First one is germ cell tumors, second one is epithelial tumors, third one is stromal tumors and fourth one is sex coat tumors. These are the uh, four main types of ovarian tumors. Epithelial tumors are the most common type of ovarian tumor accounting for approximately 90% of cases. So epithelial tumor is uh, most common type of ovarian tumor. Ninth question, which of the following is the most effective form of contraception? Condoms, birth control pills, intrauterine devices, natural pl family planning. Correct answer is intrauterine devices. Intrauterine uh, devices uh, will give most effective form of contraception. Intrauterine devices or IUDs are considered one of the most effective forms of contraception with a failure rate to less than 1%. This is compared to condoms. Condoms has failure rate of 13 to 15%. Same time birth control pills has failure rate of 9%. And natural family planning has the highest failure rate that is 25%. Same time IOD has failure rate of 1% only. So that is why it is called the most effective form of contraception. Then 10th question, which of the following is a common symptom of cervical cancer? Abdominal pain, vaginal discharge, breast tenderness, headaches. Correct answer is vaginal discharge is the most common symptom of cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is a type of cancer that occurs in the cells of the cervix the lower part of the uterus that connects to the vagina. A common symptom of cervical cancer is abnormal vaginal bleeding or discharge which may be watery, bloody or have a fall order. Abdominal pain, breast tenderness and headaches are not common symptoms of cervical cancers. These are the other options given in questions. So these are the uh, uh, Uncommon symptoms of uh, cervical cancers. So, cervic vaginal bleeding itself, it may be uh, bloody or it may be uh, uh, for smell uh, vaginal discharge or watery. So, 11th question Which of the following is a common symptom of anemia? Rapid heartbeat, slow heartbeat, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, blood sugar. Correct answer is rapid heartbeat that is tachycardia. 
Anemia is a condition where the body lacks sufficient red blood cells or hemoglobin which can result in a decreased ability to transport oxygen to the body's tissue. A rapid heartbeat that is tachycardia is a common symptom of anemia because the heart has to work harder to pump oxygen rich blood throughout the body. So that is why heart rate uh, is increasing in the case of anemia to transport more oxygen to the tissues because oxygen carrying red blood cells or hemoglobin will be low so that is why more uh, blood has to pump uh, more uh, more into tissues that is because uh, that is why it is the rate of heart uh, heartbeat is increases what is the most common type of anemia iron deficiency anemia sickle cell anemia hemolytic anemia aplastic anemia most common type of anemia is iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common type of anemia. It occurs when the body does not have enough iron to produce hemoglobin, which is needed to carry oxygen to the body's tissue. So, iron deficiency anemia, in the, it's, uh, the name itself, it is telling iron is less in uh, body, in, inside the body. So, iron helps the uh, body to make uh, hemoglobin so if uh, iron deficiency is there means there will be less hemoglobin that will lead to anemia 13th question what is the treatment for iron deficiency anemia blood transfusion antibiotics iron supplements chemotherapy correct answer is iron supplements iron supplements are the treatment for iron deficiency anemia in severe cases only, blood transfusion will do. The treatment for iron deficiency anemia is iron supplements. This can be in the form of tablets or liquid and should be taken as prescribed by a doctor. So that is important. If uh, iron overdose also, it is an uh, 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 issue. So it should be taken as per doctor's order. Fourteenth question, which of the following factors can increase the risk of developing anemia? A diet rich in iron, heavy menstrual periods, regular exercise, high blood pressure. Correct answer here, heavy menstrual period. That is a, uh, a risky factor. Heavy menstrual periods can increase the risk of developing anemia as they can lead to a loss of blood and iron. Women who experience heavy menstrual periods may need to take iron supplements or increase their intake of iron-rich foods. So, in initial uh, period, uh, the women can take iron-rich foods and if it is not controlled means, then they need to go to iron supplements. Then, uh, 15th question, what is the role of vitamin B12 in the development of anemia it helps produce red blood cells it regulates blood pressure it helps the body absorb iron it breaks down hemoglobin correct answer is it vitamin b12 helps the body to absorb iron so vitamin b12 and intrinsic factor helps the uh, body helps the body to absorb iron from stomach Vitamin B12 helps produce red blood cells which are necessary for carrying oxygen throughout the body. A deficiency in vitamin B12 can lead to a type of anemia called pernicious anemia which can cause symptoms such as fatigue, weakness and shortness of breath. So that is about today's uh, video. 15 questions we were discussed here and in that we, uh, we were discussed COVID related questions, OBG questions and uh, uh, anemia related questions and if you have any doubt uh, in these questions means you can ask in comment sections uh, i will try to uh, solve your doubts so till then bye bye so tomorrow uh, i will come with another uh, set of questions that is related to uh, nursing ethics so that will be a, a newer topic for you so we will discuss nursing ethics questions tomorrow so till then bye bye thank you